Most welcome to Alexander Technique 38. And welcome Kalle Lundahl, the guinea pig. Thank you for supporting this test. I would today continue with uh, spiraling in the movement and see how much more we can get out of it. It was very effective, don't you think, Kalle, with spirals? Yes. It is also in line with uh, Ian McGilchrist, Sir Roger Penrose, and uh, Cow's Theory as propounded by Lawrence, and of course Benoit Mendelbrot. Everything is about spirality. Even space itself is a spiral. The universe is a spiral. The galaxies are spirals. Everything that lives for a long time that is stable are actually spirally inclined. Spirals are the most pertinent, uh, most important part of the universe because it's strength they give. It's the same as chirality, handedness. And handedness itself seems to be the fundamentals of everything and especially including thinking. Thinking is a spirality as well. If you're taking contradictions in thinking and not sort of taking out one part of your thinking system say what is is not that which is called the law of the excluded middle then you are not spiraling anymore you say everything is a circle mm. it is limited that's the philosophy of limitation and in the end you lose the connection to the criterion in the real world you have to tense your neck in order to imagine that, fantasize maybe. Libet and Milgram looked into that. Most people today, their concepts are completely empty. So how do you try to uphold meaning where there is none? Where you slump, actually. This is what you do. Because when you slump, can you give a good slump here? In front no, of us? no, thank you, no slumps. <laughs> Please, just slump. No, 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 it's not good. No, 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 no. You, can, you can for a second just slump here. Very good. Perfect. You tense your neck and then the information from the real world do not come in anymore. So you become left hemispheric. The right hemisphere, uh, now I'm uh, introducing also Ian McKilchrist here, the right hemisphere take in the surrounding world. So we slump together, shut out the real world, and also your own kinesthesia, your proprioception. Mm. So this is, so to speak, the reason why you slump. And then you add this idea that it could only be one side. This is true. This is the original. This is an existence. This is an atom. It's truth in itself and so forth and you lose the ability to take in the rest especially important in Alexander technique is the surrounding area around this area mm. do you remember Betty Edwards uh, yes the, with her drawings with her drawings she showed you can enter into the right hemisphere by drawing the surrounding area you can also enter into the right hemisphere by taking in what's around you, behind you here mm. and above you. And expand that, spiral that up as much as you can. So mm. the idea of this cubic room is not really true. But if you believe in it, you slump as well. So that shut mindedness we open up we expand that and we get humor and we get a sense of joy as well mm. satisfaction which is not so easy <laughs> but in this 
uh, almost damned room by circles everywhere. Oh, look at the circles. <laughs> no, think of spirals here. Uh, well, you can approach uh, the chair if you like. Let's see here. So already now begin by expanding and taking in the, the surrounding. And I can clap my hand, it's easier if you imagine some sound. You can have a flock of birds passing above you. And there is actually a little sound here in this room. It's from the ventilation. I think you can hear that. That can help, but it's better with sounds that you can localize. This is sort of in the background, but actual sounds or an imagined sound above you. Uh, a murder of crows. Have you heard that before? A murder of crows is not nothing to do with murder or any violence. It's actually a group of crows. It's called uh, a murder of crows. Owls, I think it's a parliament or congress. Make you laugh, <laughs> which is good. So, oh yeah. So imagine a smile there. Very good. So laughing, humor will bring in the opposition because humor breaks the logic. This is what Edward de Boni, name dropping today. This is what Edward de Boni called called lateral thinking. This is when you break the linear thinking and you go somewhere else. And that is actually what thinking consists of, that breaking. Be free here, have a little lady bark on your, uh, the ridge of your nose, very free. Imagine lengthening hair at the back expanding between the shoulders if that makes sense it's a tough one yes your shoulders are now coming alive see here okay you can flex your knees a bit there yes well oh, oh there you have it now you are flexing exactly at the hip and you can let your head follow a bit here so it's you have a little bit more like this now you have this I'll show it to the viewers. Now here we will see a more, as you can see here, the head leads and the back follows and it's also aligned pretty well. And this is this alignment which is a balance but it's also an instability. I think this is the last point I want to make here. In a way, when we are going upwards, we become more unstable in a way. Mm. Because when I tense my knees, I wanted to I wanted to make some artificial stability. So you tense your knees, you always tense your hips. Mm. And you can tense above here and you tense here and you tense your neck to create a false sense of stability but actually the human system is built on instability so acknowledge that instability you also get the stability weirdly enough isn't that weird so we do that spiral again spiral the fingers forward yes well it hardly feels anything it's nothing never been like this before the spirals are the solution. <laughs> Fantastic. This is also Jeffrey Cannon who helped us a bit on the way. Quite a bit, I would say. Very good. So you can spiral forward like a clockwise spiral, but you can still go backwards at the same time. I know that's contradictory, but we allow that because today is full of humor. And this is one important because in a way, this position is contradictory in itself. 
it doesn't really make sense to the left hemisphere. But it makes sense in doing. The doing is something the left hemisphere cannot acknowledge. It doesn't know what doing is. Everything is static in the present. The metaphysics of logocentrism, of presence, also, aka logocentrism. And we will do like the accordion, we can go up, we can also raise a bit, flex means upward, yes exactly, and you come up on your accordion, own accord, isn't that a good one? Your accordion came up on its own accord, <laughs> let me like that one. <laughs> okay, I'll remove this chair. So remember the accordion and that you are a spiral and that there are spirals, arms, legs and head, five directions at least. So you're more than welcome to an activity of your pleasure. Move, clean. As we already have, we have nightfall here. So you got a spiraling monkey there. Hoo ha hoo ha. <laughs> Let's see here. So when you're in the monkey, you can let your head be a bit like this. So it follows the column up. And you have this, I would call it a very low bend. We're discovering that the hip is much, much lower than we think. It's down here actually. So when you bend forward, you bend, yeah, that's this place to bend. You keep that nice, yes, very nice balance. So spiraling up in all directions. And it's not only up, it's the spiral effect as well. This is rather important.
you spiral with the fingers and imagine them to be elongated by uh, not much but three four centimeters That's a difficult position then you you tend even more. So often when we make these turnovers, you think of the turnover as a spiraling as well. Mm. So the whole body spirals and you will notice when you start with your head, it becomes very different. Do like Pete Sampras. Point, you point, you point, you point, you point, 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 point. Do not overly tense, you direct. And uh, very well, you keep your nice balance here so you can have your head like that. Now you can also not. So keep that freedom in every position. Uphold it. And you bring in both the information coming from your own body and from the surrounding areas. What's happening outside of this room or millions of miles from here is all participating in a global relation that brings everything in, excluding nothing. Bring that smile in as well. Yeah. At the back of your eyes is exactly where the neck comes into the head. A very important point called the atlanto occipital joint. Can you check my position now? Because this is difficult to have, have the no more the back, the perfect position. Well, it's not a perfect position because it only gets better for every do. So. If you think lower down, right. uh, no, 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 no. Uh, if you think the joint is low down, you don't need to go lower down. But this is your nicely balanced here. You have the smile here, and think that that joint is here. You think that you, yeah, much lower down. It's much lower down, and every time you try it, you will find it more and more. So the idea of perfection is actually wrong. 
this is much better. So every time you do the monkey, it becomes a little bit better. And there is no end how you can learn the joint. Yeah, that's much better now. So there, looking grand. And I know it's kind of late, but still keep that, the happy thoughts going. <laughs> the only fret is bad thinking or uh, the downward spiral. So keep the happiness going. Actually, according to Ian McGilchrist, there were no unhappiness before the 18th century. Boredom, depression and seriousness came together with enlightenment. It's a rather new thing. So with a specific attitude of uh, uh, tenseness, reductionism, you also have this downward spiral. You will be much more at ease in the mornings especially. Widen between the shoulders. Very good. Direct your fingers with the spiral upward. Very good. Look at that. How was that for you, Kalle? Great. Great, great. Absolutely. It's getting a little bit better every time. And as I said before, I can see a little improvement. This is 38 and from 37, your shoulders are coming more into the action. As long as you learn to think, I think thinking in activity, that's one term by Alexander, but let's do it a bit more Wittgensteinian. There is no thinking without activity, no thinking whatsoever. It's dead thinking and you get this downward loop going this way instead you have now an upward loop yeah. and uh, I wake up every night with a shining spiral in front of me somehow and most often people associate that with divinity their higher senses which is so lacking today uh, I think I don't even ex have existed the maybe the last hundred years Alexander Technique makes it possible to bring those uh, closeness to the inner. I would say hearth, you know, like a, a fire uh, that brings warmth yeah. that you can carry with you. So even though Gothenburg, where we're recording this, is a very cold place, now with <laughs> snowing in the morning and now raining, you can imagine. Uh, it's not nice. But with that inner earth, you can keep your health and feel warm as well. Yeah. See if I can get in the monkey here. Yeah, this is really good for being this late in the afternoon. Because the more work we put in during the day, the more tension we accumulate. And you, you can never ask for all tension to disappear. For that you need to take uh, maybe an hour's bath uh, or a spa or something like that. Then maybe it could happen, but it's very good for being this hour and it's very important to relax, detense. Yeah, there is a nice feeling and it's also obvious outside your body, like a field. 
So the spiral actually goes around your body as well as inside your body. This is a good hand dance. Can let you feel more relaxed now. Mm. The daily toil is disappearing. Very good. So the hip is oh, you can stay there. You don't have to bend down anymore. This is. Now you think in the spiral. You can go backward, you can go forward in this direction. And when you go up here, you bring your shoulder in. I mentioned last episode that frozen shoulder is becoming more and more common. I walked around here earlier and saw people hunched over books, over newspapers and different things. And they are bringing so much tension into what they're doing is almost that like we have to exclude in order to understand we need to cut something out of the world to focus only on that one you will notice that that is not really necessary you can have excellent focus on something without forgetting the surrounding very good here this is your dominant arm mm. You're back looking like one thing now. It's no longer cut in two. Yeah. Before it was a cut here. And I, I imagine you find your hips, hip joint to be much lower than you thought in the beginning. Yeah. But like an accordion. Yeah, this is down there, really down there. Not here in the stomach, not here, but Very good, very good, Johnny. And you go up at the accordion, very good, and you can stay there. You can also go down the accordion. I like this one. And spiral that way, above and above and above. And you go up again, spiraling upwards. Very good, very good, very good. Oh, easy, yeah. Expand outwards. Very good. This is not, it's very good. <laughs> Quite amazing. Kali, thank you very much for that marvelous exposure of balance in action. So you're slowly learning how to think with the spiral. Look at the spiral picture I made. That's you today. So you made an amazing job with spiraling out. And it's noticeable, yeah, as well. The Lemmings Gate, Eternity. A very nice spiral. Thank you, Kalle Lundahl. Thank you, everyone, for watching in. Have a beautiful day, afternoon, or wherever you are.